Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended again by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted by a remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner, by emailing Steve McCarthy at McCarthyS at MCARTHYS that's M-C-C-A-R-T-H-Y-S at MCARTHYS.gov. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the Amherst website an audio or video recording, transcript, or, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. And with that done, we'll call the meeting to order at 5.34 p.m. and take a roll call of attendance. Uh, Doug? Here. Gaston? Here. And I'm here. So we are three here and two absent, but we do have a quorum, so we can proceed with the meeting. Okay, so uh, first up is A, Special Short-Term Liquor License Applications, SST-23-69, Genlin Fontaine, Top of the Campus, Inc., All Alcohol, December 31st, 7 p.m. to 12.30 a.m., UPS Campus Center Complex. Is somebody here about that? Oh, yes, there is, Mr. Trispit. Hello, Bill. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi, welcome again. Thanks Thank for coming. You. Thank so, you. <laughs> so this is for an event on the 31st? Yeah, the um, uh, Auxiliary Enterprises put together a, a New Year's Eve package, uh, or New Year's Eve party. So um, the timing isn't uh, the best, but um, mm -hmm. actually the, um, the attendance hasn't been all that great either, but they're going forward with it. So it's going to okay. be Student Union Ballroom, um, 7 to 1230 hors d'oeuvres, cash bar, and uh, champagne toast at midnight, so. Okay, great. Um, sounds fun. Um, yeah. All right, uh, does uh, Doug or Gaston, are there any questions or comments about this application? I think there was a little map that was sent along. No questions for me. No questions, okay, Doug. No, I just, oh, okay, I'm sorry. I was, I was thinking that, um... <coughs> I had a different end time in mind, but I just was checking the the application. It says twelve thirty. That's perfectly fine. I don't have any other questions either. I know okay. these guys are going to type shit, so we're good. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Thanks. So, um, is there a motion to approve SST dash twenty three dash sixty nine? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second, Gaston. Can I say yeah, second, second that a motion. Second. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, if there are no further questions, we'll take a vote. Doug. Aye. Gaston. Aye. And I vote aye. That is three to zero with two absent. The short term license is approved. Thank you so much for coming in, and I hope the event goes really well. Thank you, and uh, have a happy new year. We'll see you, you next year. You too. Happy new year. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Okay, so licenses section B. So what we're first going to do is renew, and these are further down, but we're gonna move them up to be the um, liquor license renewal for Savannah's LLC and Amherst Burger Company LLC. So Steve, all the paperwork is in, is in uh, proper form for the renewals? Yes, they did submit a, um, <laughs> a uh, addendum to, uh to add um, some financial information. Mm -hmm. um, so I will add uh, everybody here. So I'll, I'll make the motion to renew those two licenses. Um, okay. So we'll do that before we do the, the transfer. So I'll move to, to approve those two uh, renewals. Okay, thanks, Doug. Um, and the second? Should I just second it? Yes, you can yes. have my second, second okay. that motion. All right, thank you, Gaston. Um, if there are no further questions, we'll take a vote. Doug? Aye. Dick Gaston? Aye. And I vote aye. That is three to zero with two absent. Those two licenses have been renewed. And now we are going to move to open the hearing for the liquor license transfer. So is there a motion to open the hearing? So moved. Thank you. And a second. Second. Thank you, Gaston. Um, We'll take a vote. Uh, Doug? Aye. Gaston? Aye. And I vote aye. That is three to zero with two absent. The uh, license hearing for the liquor license transfer is now approved for both of the licenses. Okay, so we're doing two 
And uh, I guess we'll start with, um, what is the first one? Savannah's LLC to Amherst Public House LLC. Al Alcohol on premises, 40 University Drive. Manager, Paul Tupa. Am I saying that right? Tupa, yeah, oh, hi, there you are. Okay, great. So, and Tom Reedy, hi, everyone's here. Um, so who would like to introduce no. this, talk about it, um, Mr. Roberts? Gabrielle, do you want to take it? Gabrielle? Oh, I think you're muted. Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> Only four years on Zoom, you'd think we'd get it by now. Hi. I know, right. <laughs> um, Paul and Peter are um, tried and true professionals um, and UMass alums that are coming in and looking at, you'll see both Savannah's and Amherst Burger Company licenses. Um, these businesses have on varying levels of length and time um, proven to be a little bit difficult to run um, financially and bringing in um, the caliber of talent that Peter and Paul to our community and our town and restaurant scene is going to be a huge boon for all of us. We're really excited about them taking over the spaces. They're doing moderate face lifts inside and um, are hoping to get open by the end of January. Great, sounds fantastic. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, Doug or Gaston, are there any questions about the transfer? All, and Steve, all the documentation has been in and the, everyone's signed off on it. Is that right? Because you sent the so last it is, part today. Um, it has been sent off to the police chief. We are still waiting sign off from him. Okay. Um, so just pending his approval. But I do believe the applications are complete. Otherwise, they submitted uh, some uh, financial um, addendums uh, today that um, I had a couple questions about um, what the cost was. So they, they uh, supplemented that and um, that was sent along to you. So. Okay. I guess um, uh, my question would, would just be what significant changes that would be evident to patrons are anticipated in, in either or both uh, locations? Uh, I, I can take that one just if you don't, if you want, Paul. Um, sure. Amherst sure. Burger Company is getting a uh, burgundy repaint and some new televisions put in. And the what was being used as a service bar is being um, we're putting stools in front of it, so it will be a full bar. Um, otherwise, I think Paul's bringing in some new seating, um, but otherwise the table layout and arrangement is going to remain the same. And Savannah's is being given a little bit more of a warmer feel with a barn board on the interior, some light fixture changes and a couple of more TVs. And that's really the extent, it's, a, it's really just facelift. Um, I think electrical permits have been pulled, but no build permit because there's nothing being built. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much for the update. You're welcome. Yes. Definitely. So, so in general, sort of hours of operation, general, um, you know, approach to um, operations are going to be pretty similar in a lot of ways. Uh, same kind of target demographic. Um, um, can you talk a little bit about your uh, how you choose or, or how you go about um, scanning IDs or, or checking IDs? What's your process at at actually both places? Just sort of what you're what you're thinking on how you're going to handle that because that's obviously a concern for us in a college town. Sure. Uh, we require all our servers and all our staff, bartenders, servers, anybody that's going to be serving a drink has to be TIP certified. Yep. Um, yep. That's requirement by where we have all our restaurants now by all the towns. So we so we do that. Uh, we will have scanners. Um, and as well, depending on the nights, uh, obviously, depending on what the business entails of who the clientele are right now, we're, you know, it's not going to be a date night place. We're trying to like Gabriel said, trying to make it a lot warmer, friendlier, family friendly, bringing in different clientele, maybe younger than what they have. We're really not sure, if, you know, talking to the former employees to see what, you know, what was selling and who was the clientele. And it'll, you know, determine what we're going to do for if we need door people or door security or anything like that, which we use. Yeah. Would you suggest that that both places are more focused on sort of dinner? sort of the food aspect and, and the, the, the sort of bar aspect is, is um, complementary to that, but not the primary focus. Yeah, we, we definitely try to go, you know, 50, 50 food to booze with, with everything we do. We really focus on food. We have a great corporate chef um, that was actually out there yesterday, you know, just looking at equipment to kind of work his menu around. Um, Amherst Burger Company, we're going to be changing it over to, uh, it's going to be just called Uptown Tap and tap and grill, but we're really going to still focus on, you know, smash burgers and make it really 
a different menu, but just kind of, you know, quirky, but we're still going to have good food, quesadillas, other things like that, that is going to just drive more business for lunches more than, more than dinner, yep. probably. Great. Thank you. Appreciate that. Great. Um, any other questions? Just to clarify, so will the hours be remaining the same? Uh, they're going to sure start with just hours. dinner um, only until they're running. Um, and then when they bring in the second chef, uh, we'll, they'll be putting in some more serve safe applications. So, I mean, uh, certificates for Sue, but they're going to start with dinner six nights a week at both. And Steve, I think the common Vic has some pretty broad hours. <clears throat> That's what I'd expect them to, you know, just to have, I think, at least for the 40 University Drive, the old Savannah is, uh, they're looking about 11 a.m. to midnight, Tuesday, Wednesday, Sunday, and then 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. Thursday to Saturday. So I think what you have already is expansive, and I think to, to allow them flexibility so that there's not a footfall when they're trying to get up and running, you, you leave it at the, the broader hours. Yeah, like Savannah's, like like Tom said, is you know was only open, I don't know, five days, and it was only open for dinner. We really want to, you know, obviously grow and expand and get – open seven days a week for lunch and dinner and even have a brunch on Sundays, maybe even Saturdays, depending on how well it goes. So that would be for both of them, um, 11 a.m. to midnight Sunday through Wednesday and 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. Thursday through Saturday? In time, yeah. They're going to start with a, a lighter schedule until they get all the staff up and trained and certified. But if, Steve, if that's the licensed hours, I think that's – Fine. Paul, is that okay? Do you want it? I mean, do you want it earlier? Do you want like 10 a.m.? No, 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 I, no, I just, I mean, we'll have to look at for brunch. I mean, we would open at 10, but I guess that's just Saturday and Sunday. Everything else. I mean, we're looking even at, you know, thinking you no know, lunch there, depending on the crowd, 1130 at both places, depending on, you know, foot traffic and whatever traffic's going by. It's kind of so fluctuating. Steve, maybe 10 a.m. Maybe we do 10 a.m. Just to just to keep it made to keep the flexibility day. i think so uh, yeah okay just so because do you know have a like a, a time frame for when you would go to brunch i mean we might as well just approve it from 10 a.m now yeah 10 a.m would be the earliest we'd okay. ever go for yeah all right sound good all right any other questions comments before we close the hearing Nope. Okay. Is there a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Thank you, Doug. Uh, is there a second? Second that motion. Thank you, Gaston. We'll take a vote, Doug. Well, we have to actually have a motion. To, oh, right. No. Uh, we did have a motion. Sorry. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, Gaston. Hearing, I'm sorry. Aye. And I vote aye. That is three to zero with two absent. The hearing is now closed. Okay, is there any discussion among the board members about this or can we just move right into a motion to transfer both the licenses? Pending- the uh, I don't have anything state. further. I'm, I'm happy to see uh, the, the businesses getting new life so, so quickly. Um, so I have nothing further. Okay, great. So I'll make the motion to approve the two licenses pending the, the final details of, of uh, the adjustment of hours uh, and the uh, police chief sign off, et cetera. All right, great. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Gaston. Um, we'll take a vote. Doug? Aye. Gaston? Aye. And I vote aye. That is three to zero with two absent. <coughs> Sorry, the licenses are transferred. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Best of luck. Thank you for taking it on. Thank you. Thanks Happy for coming in. <laughs> I want to thank you all. Uh, the Sip and Shop and Maker's Market was a huge success. If you didn't make it, please come next year. It just gets better every year. Thank you. Have a great year. Happy New Year. To you as Happy well. New thank year. you, Gabrielle. Bye, guys. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> all right. <coughs> oh, excuse me for a sec. Sorry about that. I'm getting over a head cold. Okay. No problem. Something's going around for sure. <laughs> oh, okay. So, new Common Victor's license applications. Um, Coffee Kellogg RE, Coffee Kellogg LLC, doing business as Futura Coffee Roasters, 73 Coles Road. <laughs> 
So is anybody here for that? I don't believe so. Um, this is a new coffee shop opening up in um, North Amherst and um, no BYOB or anything, just standard, uh, standard type of coffee shop. Okay, uh, Doug. So I, I presume, did you get any information on sort of, you know, besides coffee, which I'm assuming they're going to serve given the name, but, but um, you know, are they offering other like pastries or other foods, I assume to some extent, but maybe just coffee? I'm, I'm just sort of curious. We know anything, Steve. Um, I believe they are um, going to be doing some some light food, sandwiches, bagels, toast, salad, that type of thing. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Um, if there are no other questions, um, and then Steve, you sent along that the info, right? Yep, that was in the packet. That was all in the packet. Oh, I did have one question. Yes. It shows the hours from 7 a.m. to 4 a.m. Oh, yeah. Which struck me as a little odd. Was it 7 a.m. to uh, 4 p.m., perhaps? Sorry, are you waiting for me? No, no. It's just a question for Steve regarding the hours of operation on the on the new CV license. It's seven, it said 7 a.m. to 4 uh, a.m. Which struck me as odd. I'm thinking <laughs> maybe it's 7 a.m. to 4 p.m., or do you know? I believe, yeah, that's probably what it but they intend to look at the food license. It's they say seven a.m. to five p.m. So, oh, okay. Um, I'm guessing that was just some kind of uh, typo there. I am I'm just picking up my family. Thank you. So, do we um, do we just approve it with a till five? When are they closing? Five or four? Yeah, that would probably be the. Um, the safer just to accord with the food license if there's a typo that maybe it may have uh i don't know what what they're actually working with but it can't hurt to give them the more expansive hours okay so we'll just approve it from 7 a.m to 5 p.m and since they're not here i will make the motion to approve the cv for for let me get the name right kellogg coffee llc doing business as Futura Coffee Roasters. Okay, thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Gaston. Um, if there are no questions, we'll take a vote. Doug? Aye. Gaston? Aye. And I vote aye. That is three to zero with two absent. The common victor's license is approved, CV-134. <coughs> okay. And <clears throat> moving on to, oh, and here we go, annual liquor license renewal applications. Everything from, well, you already did Amherst Burger. So Amherst Oyster Bar, and they want a renewal. And did they say when they were gonna open, Steve? Did they indicate that? Um, they did not indicate it. I, let, me, let me double check. Um, I know they said they were delayed due to um, some uh, issues with um, getting, uh, so they, let me put it right in their words. Uh, Amherst Oyster Bar is nearing construction completion. Our delays in construction are related to supply chain issues as well as labor shortages. So they did not indicate when they expect it to be open, but um, I could certainly say there's been progress walking by. Okay. All right. So, yes, Doug. I just, um, and Steve, you may or may not know the answer to this. Do you know if they've had any difficulty scheduling um, inspections? Uh, that sort of thing, because if they've had their construction schedule delayed, that often shifts when they can do inspections, and then that makes it harder to get them scheduled. Do you know if they've had struggles around that as well? Um, I don't believe so. We generally, um, inspections, um, I, I work with, with uh, in, in inspections, and generally um, inspection availability is pretty quick. So um, I wouldn't expect that's been a significant factor in their delays. That's good to know, and I'm glad to hear, because, you know, we don't want us to be in the way of people trying to trying to open their business we right. I mean, obviously want to make sure our inspections happen and things are in good order but yeah we um we generally um are able to uh, move things along pretty quickly with inspections and um at a certain couple times a year where it does get a little bit busy but even then i wouldn't expect you'd ever be further than a week out okay and and again this is a how long have they held this license without being open is this the Will this be the second renewal? This so essentially kind of renewal, the third yep. year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And are we at quota on that particular? Are we at quota on the? We um, are not. No, for this uh, this type. Okay, so this doesn't prevent someone else from getting a license. It's. It, I just want to confirm that. So. Yeah, that's correct. There's no um. This this license type is not a quota. We have more than five available. I think or eight, but certainly more than five available. So it wouldn't um. It wouldn't be be causing anybody any delays and or out of unavailability of licenses. Okay. Okay. Are there any other licenses in the list that have questions that we want to ask about? Um, yes, I would also point out the Spoke Live is also not open. Um, they got their license in August, I believe, and um, oh, right. I know they are shooting to be open by February 1st. Yeah. That okay. one's... I mean, they're, uh, they're also, I presume, doing some remodeling work. Is that correct? In reserve? Um, the entire, this, this is the um, the new spoke building. And yeah, they, they were doing significant remodeling. I think that building was three different units before and they are right. uh, combining it into one. And yeah, it was going from a significant remodeling in that building. So the laundromat, the dry, I think it was at laundromat dry cleaners and then um, Charlie's Old Town Tavern or something was yep. where the three, and they're merging all of those, correct? Yeah. Yeah, I know that's there was what some I thought. fire, so it, some fire protection they had to do as well. And yeah, I mean, for me, I'll just I'll say generally that that you know, given that they applied in August and they're still working through construction stuff, I'm much less worried about that one relative, you know, relative to some other cases we just talked about. So, okay. All right. So, uh, Steve, is there any outstanding paperwork or anything pending police chief approval on this list that we need to include in the motion? I do not believe so. I think um, we had one that had a uh, outstanding issue, and I believe that has been um, addressed today. Um, I still think it would probably be prudent just to, for all of these to say, um, you know, subject to meeting all requirements, just in case there's something I missed. But I believe for all of these, they... Um, they are ready to go. Okay, great. If there are any other qu questions, yes, Doug. I was just going to make the motion. Excellent, great. So Thank I move to approve the uh, annual liquor license applications, with the exception of uh, the the two that have been completed already, which is Amherst Burger Company and Savannah's, uh, pending any outstanding uh, requirements necessary to complete the application or the or the renewal. Great. Thank Second you. that motion. Thank you. And if the, are there any questions? If no, no questions. And then we'll take a vote. Doug? Aye. Gaston? Aye. And I vote aye. That is three to zero with two absent. Those liquor licenses are renewed for 2024. OK. Um, next up are, where are we? Uh, common victualers license renewal applications. So again, we'll do these as a group. And this is just about everybody in town. Um, so are there any questions about these, Steve, anything outstanding? I mean, these are just I common things. I believe Vicks, these so. should, um, should all be set. I think this is the vast majority. I, I, um, I know that I think, um, these are all, yeah, I think there was a couple of common Vicks that might still be floating out there waiting for things that, for common Vicks. I believe I only put on ones that were, um, ready to go, but as always, it, uh, can't hurt to add that caveat in the motion, but they are all, um, nothing, nothing. Nothing outstanding about any of them, I would say. Great, thank you. Um, so, Doug? So I will move to renew the common vehicular uh, licenses as listed on the agenda, pending any outstanding requirements to be satisfied. Thank you, Doug. Is there a second? Uh, second that motion. Thank you, Gaston. If there are no questions, we'll take a vote. Doug? Aye. Gaston? Aye. Okay, thank you. And I vote aye. That is three to zero with two absent. The common VIX are approved. Um, let's see. Okay, so now we have the two common VIXers license with BYOB renewal applications, Miss Saigon and Momo Tibetan Restaurant. Um, and are there any questions about these? Those are just standard, right, Steve? Everything's in order with these two. I don't, I don't, but I think those are just continuing as is. Okay, great. Is there a motion to approve the two common victor licenses with BYOB? So moved. Thank you, Doug. Um, is there a second? 
Second. Thank you, Gaston. Um, I'll, I'll take a vote. Doug? Aye. Gaston? Aye. And I vote aye, three to zero with two absent. Those two licenses are renewed. Okay, next up is uh, live entertainment license renewal applications. And- um, Can I offer a suggestion? Yes. So unless Steve has a complication with any of the remaining licenses, oh, yeah. can I make we a motion just... to do like all of them in one fell swoop? Can we do that, Steve? Certainly. I would maybe to... um, pull aside the Roosters Roman Cantina as they are asking for um, some different hours. Um, okay. But everything else right. should be business as usual. So well. everything else. I will, uh, I'll make that motion. So okay. I move to uh, approve renewal applications for live entertainment as listed on the agenda, secondhand sales as listed on the agenda, and auto dealers licenses as listed on the agenda pending any outstanding requirements. Thank you, Doug. Um, is there a second? Second, thank you, Doug. Yeah, thanks. Um, okay, we'll take a vote. Doug? Aye. Gaston? Aye. And I vote aye, that is three to zero, two absent. All of those have been approved. Um, okay, and then uh, the last one is Rooster's Roaming Cantina Lunch Cart Food Truck License Renewal Application. So they want to change their hours on this, Steve? Um, yeah, I mean, they um, they were kind of on a, uh, a tentative. We were kind of experimenting with the late night hours last year. Mm -hmm. And um, they are trying to renew with... Um, the hours of uh, Wednesday through Sunday, 8.30 p.m. through 3 a.m. Wednesday to Sunday, 8.30 to 3 a.m. What were they before? Were they open till 2? I believe was it three? The, the special hours they had been given were till 2. Till 2? I could be wrong. Okay. I, don't, I, I think it was 2, yeah. I, yeah. Then, um, their normal hours from last year. Um, I think was until um, it was last year. Yeah, their normal hours were two to eight. Right. Just a yes. a quick okay. question, um, if I could, Steve. It, it, opening till three a.m. Is there any um, uh, zoning or? Um, yeah, any zoning limitations for say brick and mortar that don't that would prevent them from being open that late or that early, I guess is one way to put it. Um, I just want to overly advantage or disadvantage, but at the same time, I mean I'm not opposed to being open to 3 a.m. And um, you know, some of these are close to some neighborhoods, so we want to be a little conscientious of that, but it's also we don't want to overly advantage them necessarily relative to brick and mortar businesses. So I just want to kind of think through that a little bit, but I also just want to know whether or not if you know if I had a brick and mortar place. And I wanted to be open till 3 a.m. to serve, you know, scrambled eggs. Could I do it? I believe there is. Um, if, if, if it is just food, um, you would be able to be open that late. Um, alcohol, no. But um, if right. it's just food, I don't believe there's any. Um, you, I think you would have to get approval for that. But there wouldn't be. I don't believe it would be prohibited. Okay. And, and just to follow up on that, in the places that we have designated as food truck locations, do any of them have zoning that would would um, prevent a business from being open that late uh, from the standpoint of this? So if, you know, if you had a brick and mortar business and you're, you know, in the middle of a residential neighborhood, you know, CBA or, or the planning board might limit you being able to stay open that late because you're in the middle of a residential neighborhood and the general zoning doesn't fit. So you have to get like a special permit or something like that. <clears throat> we don't have any of our, I, I wouldn't think this to be true given where our, our locations are, but but you're not aware of any of those types of uh, general zoning limitations on any of our currently approved um, food truck locations, right? Well, the um, I believe the only spot they are really using in, outside of our special um, special programs is the uh, Kendrick Park location. And um, I don't know what the zoning is specifically exactly there. I mean, across the street is the, is the BG um, where you would. I, that, that section maybe BL or, um, or uh, maybe RG. 
kind of exactly where where that spot is. I can actually I'm trying to pull up. But, um, but the key thing there is that, that the spots are a full. I mean, the street fully buffers them from anything that's that's across, and there's nothing in Kendrick Park. So, you know, that's an example where even if the zoning across the street was different, it's across the street. So that I think creates a sufficient buffer. So, and I don't know of any other places that we've pre-approved that would be, you know, problematic. I just want to pose a question in case you knew of anything. I don't have any issue with this hours change. I just wanted to kind of check on those couple of things. Yeah, the um, the other spots, um, the uh, so I'm just trying to make sure I'm. So the uh, yeah the bull all the, um, so the spot next to the common is within the bg um yep. i mean they actually all three of them are actually kind of right on the boundary of bg and rg um and rg yeah. um i mean i know there are a couple of restaurants in that zone too but it's the bg would be much more easy for for um for businesses anyway um i don't i don't want to speak too uh too certainly without reviewing the zoning bylaw but um there's certainly adjacent at the very least directly adjacent to the BG or where you would be able to do that. Yeah. No, that's kind of what I thought as well. So just, just checking. Um, would you like a motion? Let's do it. All right. Uh, so I moved the to entire approve. Year is, uh, just, you know, I know we, we might be changing some things with um, the late night service. I mean, I just want to make sure the board is approving this for the, the entire year. Yeah, I was going to suggest that, um, and I think the thing we can we can do is that if we decide to change our regulations that constrains it, then obviously those would superimpose, and we'd want to do it in a way that's thoughtful. But I yeah. would suggest we go ahead. Um, okay. So I'll move to approve the uh, the let me get the license title correctly the lunch cart food truck license renewal for Roosters Roman Cantina with the hours of you said that was Wednesday through Sunday. Is that correct? Wednesday 8, 30 through PM to 3 a.m. That's correct. Yep. Um, pending any outstanding um, uh, requirements. Thanks, Doug. Is there a second? Yes, second. Thank you so much, Gaston. Um, okay, if there's no questions, we'll take a vote. Doug? Aye. Uh, Gaston? Aye. And I vote aye. That is three to zero with two absent. That license is renewed with the new hours. Okay, we got through them. Um, next up is discussion topics. And we have just upcoming meetings and agenda. And as far as I know, we're meeting on the 18th of January at 530 in person in the town hall room. Is that correct, Steve? Almost certainly. I'll have to confirm and make sure we can reserve it. But okay, um, almost certainly, yep. Uh, and, and there's, but it's, we agreed to do in person on the 18th of January at 5.30. So um, somewhere. Um, okay. And is there anything, we'll just go through our discussion topics. Did anyone have anything particular? I think we have the adult use marijuana regulations to talk about. And um, the attorney should be back by, by then with the answer. Correct, Steve? So I, I didn't actually add any other discussion items besides upcoming meetings. And oh, I, oh, you're talking about what, what we want to put on the, sorry. Yeah, right. what we want yeah, to put okay. on the agenda okay. in January. Um, yeah, just. Um, yeah. So uh, if I may just. Yes. I um, happened to forward something to Steve. I'm not sure if he even saw it this afternoon. Um, there's a bulletin from the Division of Local Services. Um, it relates to host community agreements and uh -huh. marijuana uh, establishments and how, you know, the changes of the law, you know, will will impact those and when they take effect and that sort of thing. So I think it's just good for us to know that, um, you know, in, in, in some respects, just so we're aware of in case it has any impact on our continuing work relative to licensing. But um, just an FYI, it came today. Um, but I'm hoping Steve just kind of tucks that in our packet for reviewing review. It's a Q and a kind of document. It's two or three pages. I skimmed it. Um, it's more for the, the town manager to, you know, as he has host community agreements expire and renew um, how they have to change and the impact of, of what uh, kinds of, I forget what the term is, is a certain kind of fee. Um, not, they're community not damaged. Impact. But they're, what's that? Is it community impact fee? Is that, yeah, I think it's community impact fees. So, 
Anyway, well, thank you for saying that approach. along, Doug. I meant to bring that up in uh, topics not reasonably anticipated, but you beat me to it. But no, I haven't had a chance to uh, review that in detail either. But thanks for saying that along. I wasn't aware of that, so that'll certainly be useful. Yeah, I'm on the on the e email list for the Department of Local, you know, Local Services. So anyway, it, it's just an informational thing as we put that on the agenda. Because I think we're going to continue to button that up, and and uh, it's just good for us to be aware of how that is changing and will play out over the next couple of years. All right, thanks. Well, uh, yeah. Folks, if it's if there's nothing super pressing, I'd uh, I'd I guess move to adjourn if it's uh, copacetic. Okay, um, let's just see. We can do that if we can. Uh, we did just meet upcoming meetings. Topics not reasonably anticipated, and that is done. Right? Is there any other topics? I've got anybody else? else? No. Nope. Okay. All right. And is there a motion to adjourn? I think so he made the motion. I'll make the okay. second. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and we'll take a vote, Doug. Aye. Guest on. Aye. And I vote aye. Three to zero with two absent. We're adjourned at 6.09 p.m. All right, everybody. See you on the 18th. Happy Fantastic. New Year. Thank you so yeah. much. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you all very much. Bye. Bye-bye.